Hello and welcome back to Asian Cinema Season 2, continuing on with the Naoko Ogigami reviews. This is her third feature film from 2006, entitled Seagull Diner. I'm also joined again uh, in this video by Daisuke Beppu, who will be talking about his thoughts on this film after I've talked about them, so look forward to that. I wasn't able to find a way to watch her second feature film, unfortunately, so that's going to be kind of one of my white whales. I think that it's it hasn't got very good reviews and hardly anyone has seen it, so I doubt that it's a, a fantastic film. But I always feel a sense of needing to be a completist, when I, especially with a director whose work I love. So I really want to get to her second film at some point, but unfortunately uh, for now it's, uh, it's just not possible. But this one more than makes up for that. This film... This really, this was the film that I, I fully decided, okay, I'm going to do an Asian cinema season again, if only to just talk about these movies and this one in particular. Seagull Diner. I loved, loved, loved this film. And, and I wish that I could kind of memorize the, the character names and the, the wonderful actresses who play in the film and, and to memorize their names, but I just get too, I get too fearful of just butchering the pronunciations of multiple Japanese names. So... Unfortunately, I won't be able to go into that. Perhaps, um, you know, you'll forgive me on that one, but I just, yeah, I, I get a little bit too particular about that, I have to admit, but it is what it is. And maybe Daisuke can kind of uh, help out with that, and in his thoughts on the film, he could talk about the characters' names and the actresses' names, perhaps, and maybe offer more context on the actresses and what they've done before, I don't know. Regardless, this is a really interesting film because it's set in Finland and made in Finland. And this is something that I have really grown to appreciate about uh, Ogigami is that she is a she's a filmmaker who isn't bound to where she lives. She isn't a, a Japanese filmmaker who makes movies in Japan. You know, as as you'll hear when I get on with these reviews, she's made a film films in Japan she's made this film in Finland she made one in Canada you know she very much has a has a feeling and a flavor for kind of the international I, I believe that she went uh, to study in America for about four five six years something like that she spent an extended period of time in America studying and when she came back to Japan that's when she started uh, getting stuck into making movies and things so she very much has you know she 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 kind of a traveler in that sense and I'm not sure if she'd been to Finland before I have no idea why this was set in Finland I'd love to know I'd love to know more details and context about her making this film her thought process behind making this film but uh, I was unable to find anything online anyway so it's set in Finland and it's about this Japanese woman who has set up a diner in Finland and it's never really delved into too deeply why she's done this. She kind of talks about it briefly, but you never really get this kind of uh, unnatural exposition in Ogigami's films, I don't think. You don't really get the setup. You don't really get the, this is why this is this. This is why this character is doing this. There isn't a scene in the movie where the character turns around and says, well, it all stems back to my childhood. You know, you kind of, you fill in the details for yourself and you just kind of glean from those little bits of conversation what the story behind this character could be. From what I gathered, you know, something had happened and she, I think her, maybe her mother passed away. Maybe that was it. Maybe I've just forgotten that little detail. But I, mem I remember feeling, having this feeling that she had obviously come into some money and just decided to go to Finland. And she does talk about why she went to Finland. Uh, but I can't recall that specific detail, I have to admit. But the film isn't really about that. She set up this diner and you have these the local Finnish people, uh, particularly the, the middle-aged women walking past the diner, looking in very disapprovingly, like, what is this very short, small Japanese woman doing in a diner where she has no customers? And she wakes up every day, she goes to her diner, she, she cleans the tables, she wipes the glasses, and no one comes in. And one day, she gets her first customer. And he's, uh, he's, he's, he's Finnish himself, and he's a kind of, it looks like he's kind of a manga fan, an anime fan. He always has these t-shirts on with some kind of Japanese kind of text and stuff. And so he's very, like, you know, respectful and, and things, and he comes in. And then she meets another Japanese woman in Finland of all places. I think it's in, like, a, a library cafe or something like that. And what happens is her first customer, the Finnish guy, he was asking the woman, if she knew this theme song to some kind of Japanese show and she couldn't remember it and it was bugging her all day and she sees this other Japanese woman in, in this cafe and she goes over and says, excuse me, do you know this theme song, how it goes? And she's like, oh yeah, I can write it down for you. And based on this, these two Japanese women form a friendship. And the one that she meets is a woman who is just completely just 
throwing herself in, out into the world. Uh, she says that she took a globe, she span it around, she put her finger down, and it said Finland. That's why she's there. She doesn't know why she's there. She doesn't know what she's doing. She's kind of a wanderer. And she ends up joining the, the owner of the, the diner as her assistant. And still they have no customers, really, except for the one guy who comes in every day and gets a free coffee because he's the first customer. And, you know, you follow them kind of not really making a plan to, to make the diner a success, but just kind of hoping that things will pick up. And it's just a film that really just revels in the minute details, really. There, there's no threat in the film. There's no conflict in the film, really. There's, there's a, a, a micro you know, sequence of conflict uh, throughout the film where there's this mysterious woman who comes outside the diner and just looks in very angrily, you know. So that's kind of a minor note of conflict in the film. But as far as the whole story is concerned, there's, there's no conflict. There, there's no villain, you know. It's just about characters kind of almost hanging out, but trying to make this diner work and kind of trying different you know, the food recipes. There's a sequence where they cook uh, cinnamon rolls and the smell kind of wafts out of the out of the diner and those middle-aged women who keep kind of looking disapprovingly go, oh, this smells quite nice. And they come in and business starts to pick up. But it's it's more about these two characters who kind of uh, are kind of helping each other in a way. And then they meet another Japanese woman who is kind of almost stranded in Finland because her luggage has gone missing. And uh, that's th that character is played by the actress uh, Masako Motai, who I was talking about in Yoshino's Barbershop. So when she turned up in this film, I was really happy to see her because I really liked her in Yoshino's Barbershop. And she was a fun character, and I just loved the dynamic between these three, even four with the Finnish guy who keeps coming in all the time. But it's a film that just, uh, it, to me, it felt like, it felt like a Miyazaki film. It felt like an anime. Probably because it was set in Finland and it reminded me of Kiki's Delivery Service. Service not only in the, the person coming to a foreign town and setting up a business in a way, but also in just the, the architecture, the way the town looks, you know, things like that. It felt very reminiscent of Kiki's Delivery Service. But also just how it's this story where there's just it's just about characters and there's no kind of big kind of dramatic plot. It's just, it's just characters, and it's lovely. Like, there's something to be said for me for a film that just makes you feel so comforted when you watch it, and that's what I got from this. And I, I loved the three lead actresses in the film. They're all different. They all brought something unique to their characters, and I loved how they bounced off each other, but it was in a very relaxed and subtle way. I just bought into this story so much, even if it is unrealistic that these three Japanese women would all, through kind of serendipitous means end up in that same place and, and working together in this diner but you know it, it, in a way it feels like a f and again the the whole idea of looking into this business like would she be able to really sustain this business kind of the rent for the diner and all the money she has to put in for the the, the supplies uh, when there's no customers for like months on end at one point she even says you know if this you know if this completely tanks and I'm really paraphrasing here but she says you know if things go wrong then I'll just I'll leave you know but she's she obviously has kind of a build up of money where she's able to kind of um, pursue this business in a very relaxed manner which I'm sure anyone who opens a restaurant or cafe or diner would love to do, but I'm sure it's a very stressful thing to undertake in your life. Whereas this is portrayed as a very relaxing and kind of carefree thing. So as far as the realism of this story, you know, there isn't too much of it. But the humanity of the characters and just the relatability of people who become friends through uh, a very, what's the word... I don't want to say unique, but well, I suppose it is a unique, but people who become friends through a very unlikely situation, that's the word I was looking for, unlikely. And that's what this film is, it's an unlikely gathering of characters and people. And you just watch that unfold, and, and that's all the movie is, and I absolutely loved it. And I guarantee you there are people who have seen this film who were bored senseless, I understand that completely. I don't think this is a... You know, a film that is going to be universal. I don't think it's a film that everyone's going to like. Not that any film really is, but I do feel like this is a film that really is at risk at losing its audience in the sense that not much really happens and it might bore a lot of people. But I just really bought into this very unique tale of a Japanese woman, Japanese women in Finland kind of trying to make this diner work. 
but not really stressing about it too much either. Like, it's just a really odd film, and I love how it is so... You know, there's no film like this, I don't think. Maybe there is somewhere, but it's something that I've just never seen before. And it's just a series of little great little episodic scenes as well, just little beats like this this guy who comes in and kind of shows the, the woman who runs the diner how to, to make coffee like the perfect cup of coffee, and just little moments like that that made the film so wonderful to me. I, I loved this film. And now we will pass over to Tokyo and Daisuke Beppu and see what he thought of Seagull Diner. Greetings from Tokyo. This is Daisuke. And I'd like to talk to you now about Naoko Ogigami's film, which is uh, Kamome Shokudo, which can be translated into Seagull Diner. Now this is from 2006. This film is shot uh, entirely in Finland, uh, which is a very interesting choice on the part of Ogigami, the director. And I can say with great confidence that I think of the films that we've seen so far by Ogigami, we've seen not one dud. We've seen, I think, films that are masterful, that are very confident, that are filled with characters that Ogigami respects and uh, she lets her camera uh, have the characters explore who they are. So uh, we know that Ogigami respects her characters and indeed loves her characters, but lets her characters flesh out in the world that she's creating. Uh, so this is all to say that up to now we've seen a lot of great works by Ogigami, but, but 2006 uh, Seagull Diner is, I would uh, say, her first great film. This is her first masterpiece. Uh, really, it's a, a towering achievement, and it is an achievement that is so remarkable in that it seems to defy the general expectations of a fish-out-of-water story, uh, because this is essentially a fish-out-of-water story because we have these Japanese characters uh, coming into this, uh, uh, you know, this European town uh, trying to make a, a success of this particular diner that they've uh, that that they're running here so this is a a wonderfully uh, typical film in Ogigami's canon in the sense we have another fish out of water story uh, outsiders in this environment that is created so at the same time of course we also get the wonderful Ogigami trademark which is she lets her characters breathe in the moment in the film. Uh, while there are certain moments that are uh, maybe uh, injected for visual humor, visual gags, uh, I think for the most part she just lets her camera settle and she steps back and she lets her characters grow and interact within the context of a particular scene. This is a, a, an astounding way to tell a story and we therefore have these fairly long scenes. We don't get too much camera movement. We do get some, but not too much. It doesn't, uh, f it's not in any way flashy. I don't think it takes away from the purity of the scene. And the story itself doesn't present any high points of typical drama, shall we say. There are no, uh, there's no beginning, middle, and end, so to speak. There are just uh, the setting and the introduction of characters and more introduction of characters. And then the characters that were introduced before come in and, and then they interact with the new characters. And then we get more uh, interesting uh, things that occur. And that's essentially what this film is. And yet there is a connection that occurs between her characters that is in some moments, truly extraordinary, truly extraordinary. I mean, we have sometimes we have characters that are Japanese and sometimes they are, you know, they're non-Japanese and they're speaking different languages and yet there's a connection that is occurring between them that is uh, heartwarming and it shows something really deep about human nature, this idea of a universal uh, thing that connects everyone, uh, regardless of whether or not we are from the same country or the same background, or we speak the same language or not. And yet the way in which Ogigami treats that theme is so subtle, 
It's so nuanced. It, she never hits you over the head with some kind of message. No, 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 no. She just is very calm and she just lets the, the film uh, run its course without doing anything uh, overly didactic or overly uh, preachy. Nothing of the sort, nothing of the sort. It, it's almost as though we see the film grow organically. And uh, I think that's the most exciting kind of cinema. Uh, it, it doesn't feel planned. It feels truly natural and organic. And it seems to have, uh, it feels like anyway, you know, feels like something that has a, a wonderfully um, tender uh, touch to it, uh, which I really admire very much. Uh, and the tenderness comes from the, uh, the, the way in which I think Ogigami gives her characters room. And I really love Ogigami here because she, you know that she loves the characters and uh, re res respects them so much. Oh gosh, this is, a, uh, this is the, a great film. This is a masterpiece, a masterpiece. And uh, anyone who says otherwise, I, I would respectfully disagree. Uh, this, is a, this is a towering achievement. Uh, and it's, uh, it, uh, I've seen it three times now. And uh, uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> this is a towering achievement. Uh, Seagull Diner, Kamo uh, And uh, it's, like I said, it's, it's towering in the sense that it's so uh, modest and restrained and it doesn't uh, preach, it instead lingers. It just sets a tone and sets a mood and just lingers. And it is at once funny and sometimes serious, sometimes a little bit scary, but n n that never uh, overpowers the rest of the film. And there's always a feeling of, of just genuine uh, happiness <laughs> and pleasantness. You know, this is a, a type of film that makes you happy when you watch it and then when you feel see it and when you finish it you realize my goodness now I I have just uh, been uh, fortunate enough to experience this film and it has made me so happy <laughs> so this is uh, Seagull Diner Kama Meshokudo and uh, highly recommended uh, again Naoko Ogiyami is uh, now just uh, finding her her way and she has produced here uh, a great masterpiece of uh, contemporary Japanese cinema. Okay. Thank you very much. So there we go. That was my thoughts on Seagull Dino. Uh, yeah, I, I could blather on more about the film, but I think I've covered all the bases of why I really like it and why I love it, in fact. And I look forward to talking about uh, even more of Naoko Ogigami's films uh, as we continue on this little mini-series. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> hey, <right> <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans of Carlin into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you. Cause...